Have you seen this? CNN probably regrets inviting Donald Trump's attorney Alina Habba for this next segment because I don't think anyone has been able to completely corner the network like this over the ongoing E. Jean Carroll defamation case. Watch her clash with Dana Bash before we get into it. You have said that you are going to appeal this case. What specifically do you plan to appeal? Uh, I did not make that statement. I, I'm sure you're referring to the trial attorney who said that. But um, as far as the appeal, I think you have to understand something. Only in the state of New York could you be found not guilty of but then you defame someone when you said you didn't them. That in itself just doesn't make sense, right? So we have a law that was put in place that has a one-year opening for anybody and everybody, and probably E.G. Karras specifically, to bring a claim against Donald Trump. I think there's something that way too many people seem to forget about this issue. The case you're seeing being dragged on does not concern the original assault allegations, but the ensuing back and forth defamation lawsuits that landed Trump with a massive $83.3 million to pay in damages. The original allegations by E. Jean Carroll were already decided last year when the jury rejected E. Jean's claim that Trump forced himself upon her. The verdict instead chose to use the word assault in the civil case and offered Donald Trump to pay her $5 million which was paid to the court of New York. It's also worth mentioning that a civil case, unlike a criminal one, operates on the basis of preponderance of evidence with much lower standards for establishing a verdict one way or another, especially for a case this old. But right now, that case has receded to the background and defamation lawsuits have instead overshadowed much of the news media this year. Donald Trump had until the 9th of March to pay the hefty amount of $83 million, but he instead chose to file an appeal with the help of a cash bond of an even greater amount of nearly $92 million. But in the back and forth of these large sums of money, perhaps defamation lawsuits like this are easy to spill over, especially considering how the legal verbiage around Trump's assault verdict is very hard to navigate for the average person. That tight navigation is what just landed ABC News in trouble with Donald Trump as well. Host George Stephanopoulos repeatedly used the R word to describe the original verdict in the E. Jean Carroll case, prompting Trump to officially file a defamation lawsuit against the network alleging that George Stephanopoulos falsely stated on several occasions that Trump had been found liable by multiple juries for forcing himself on Miss E. Jean Carroll. These statements were and remain false and were made by defendant with actual malice or a reckless disregard. It's clear that Trump is willing to take someone using incorrect legal verbiage to trigger more defamation lawsuits, and Alina Habba will be Trump's right-hand person to take them forward in the courts. To that point, in the trial, you raised concerns of a billionaire who donated to uh, Democrat, Democratic causes, paying for some of the accusers, uh, some of the legal fees. Some of the money that President Trump has used in his defense comes from political donations, and that you believe that that is different from a donation that is given by a political operative or a political donor on the other side of the aisle? A political operative. Let me ask you this question. I'm glad you brought him up, Reid Hoffman. That's who you're talking about. How come you didn't cover that he was at Epstein's Island? There certainly is legal debate whether campaign finance contributions can be used to pay for a candidate's legal fees, with some legal experts saying that it is allowed if the litigation concerns a candidate's political conduct or future. But that's not even the debate here with someone like E. Jean Carroll, because when she brought forward her allegations of assault, it was at least, in theory, a purely non-political allegation of sexual misconduct, and when a case of that nature is supported out of nowhere by a shady character like Reid Hoffman, that's nowhere near the same thing as the Save America PAC paying for Trump's legal fees. Reid Hoffman is the founder of LinkedIn and the 14th largest owner to the Democratic Party, not to mention a known visitor to Epstein's Island, He's someone we've talked about on the channel before, and it would be a bit of a stretch to compare someone like him supporting E. Jean Carroll's case versus a political action committee that explicitly raises funds to help candidates and their campaigns win. However, it is still important to remember that in a strictly legal sense, there is much less debate or disagreement on whether individuals like Reid Hoffman can contribute to legal fees versus the super PACs that have more elaborate rules 
around how the funds can be utilized. Question to you is, I mentioned that there are 15 women altogether who have alleged that Trump uh, sexually harassed or assaulted them. Are you concerned that more <laughs> Are we talking of this... about 2016? Hold on, hold on. Are you concerned I have that... not gotten all a told, complaint from all 15 told. women. Are you concerned that the case that we saw today, that it is maybe just the beginning, that other criminal action could <laughs> be in the future? No. No, I all. think you're concerned that he is going to win, which is why you're bringing up 2016 things, because you have nothing to bring up. That's what I think you're concerned. And you should be concerned. He's leading in the polls. OK, you can make of that what you will. But what's more important than allegations or the trials or convictions we get when they move to a court of law? And when it comes to Donald Trump's perhaps debatable history with women, the cases that actually move to court are where conversations are more productive. In light of this, the E. Jean Carroll case is one exception where the courts did get involved, though in a civil trial and not a criminal one. Alina Haba herself is understandably in a tight spot because being someone's attorney in one case does not mean she can vouch for the innocence or guilt for his entire character or history with women. Since 2016, uh, is that what we're talking about? I'm, Great. I'm talking are you about talking about 20, are, Give me a year. These 15 women. Are we talking about 2016 when he was running and almost won and then did win? It is. It, it is not relevant. What what you're talking about? It is about relevant. The no, you it's just not. Just asked me about 15 women. I don't have yes. 15 women that have come forth with a claim. Okay. Where are they? I don't have them. I didn't you're say that they came. From I didn't say that they, they came forward the with the claim. I said that they have made no, public did. statements. I said they have made public statements, and my question In 2016, was, are you concerned and you about you have this? nothing okay. for 2024. Thank you. Thank no. you for your time. Alina Haba's question about where are they is perhaps important because no other women apart from E. Jean have brought forward their allegations against Donald Trump in a court of law. There have been allegations ensuing defamation lawsuits or a civil trial but a lack of proceedings in a criminal court for the allegations that can actually help bring forward the truth around them. I think the American people would also benefit from knowing the full truth around every allegation, whether true or politically motivated, as Trump claims. When that doesn't happen, unresolved allegations are easy to use by both Trump supporters and detractors as a way to prove their point. And in the back and forth defamation lawsuits we're seeing in the E. Jean Carroll case, that's ultimately not more important in making the voters aware of, of who they're supporting than someone like a legal proceeding on the allegations that actually help uncover the truth. Alina Haba herself has been on Trump's legal team since 2021, which is almost two years after the E. Jean Carroll allegations. In that time, she certainly had her share of run-ins with the media as well as the court system in defending Donald Trump. At one point, Alina was even threatened by a New York judge to be put in jail herself during a hearing. But for the rest of us who are not as interested in the spectacle of politics and endless legal battles, it is imperative that the legal system does the job it's supposed to do in making sure the truth around allegations is uncovered and the voting base can make more informed decisions in every election.